when the narcissist meets their match. When they encounter their equal in strength or ability. When they are competing against someone who they cannot beat because they are equal or better than they are. It's not always so easy for the narcissist to discard someone and then move on to their next source without any problems. If you give them enough rope, they will hang themselves. If you give them enough freedom for them to make a mistake, they will get into trouble. They will bring about their own downfall. Sometimes this is what will happen when they move on from you. They don't always run into people who they can exploit. They don't always run into people who are easy to take advantage of. Sometimes the narcissist meets their match. Narcissists are very greedy. They need excessive attention and admiration. They have excessive, intense and selfish desires for money, power, status and sex. And sometimes this leads them to their own downfall, their own ruin or failure. They lack the ability to predict what will happen in the future because they're in survival mode and they're too focused on what they need today. And when you first meet them, they can be very gullible. They can be easily persuaded to believe something. They can be easily tricked or deceived. They live in this delusional fantasy where they believe that they are going to attain unlimited power and status. They believe that they're going to meet this fictional character who can be everything that they want them to be and give them everything that they need. They feel inherently worthy and deserving of whatever they desire. And they really believe that the next person is going to be everything that they could ever need. But by holding these delusional beliefs, it can sometimes lead them to their downfall. They will go to any extent to get what they want. They will do whatever it takes. They will assist anyone who makes them believe that they are working jointly towards the same desires. Even if it is just something that they are fantasizing about in their minds. And it's not something that has any basis or foundation in reality. It's not something that's likely or probable. But the narcissist would like it to be. They would like to make their fantasy a reality. And they have a feeling of expectation and desire for it to happen. That's what motivates them through the love bombing phase when they are trying to secure you as their source of supply. When they first meet you, they give you the false character. They act like they're so friendly and given. And this is something that is easily detected by other narcissists. It is something that they will take advantage of. All the other narcissist has to do is alter their deceptive outward appearance to be whatever the other narcissist desires. They're both completely delusional. They're both living in a fantasy. So it works very well initially. It's like shared psychosis. They know how to seduce each other. 
They know how to feed each other's desires and reflect back the delusional fantasy. They're both acting. They're both playing a role. But at some point, the narcissist who is more easily persuaded will then become prey to the other narcissist. From the outside, it may look like they were meant to be together. It may look like they're perfect for each other. But it doesn't mean that the narcissist is getting what they want. Sometimes it's not so easy for them to find someone to take advantage of. Sometimes narcissists run into other narcissists. And they both feed back whatever delusional fantasy they might desire. One of them might desire sex, which the other narcissist will give to them in exchange for money, power and status. And at first it works really well, because they're both tricking and deceiving each other. They're both displaying a false character that the other wants to see. They're both validating each other's delusional fantasy. It can be a very satisfying experience for them in the beginning. Even if it isn't real. They don't notice that it isn't real. So their ignorance is bliss. The narcissist who needs the most help will try very hard to attract the attention of the other narcissist. They will make it very obvious that they want a relationship with them. Because they are in need of something that the other narcissist can provide. They are trying to use the other narcissist while also putting themselves in a position to be used. The narcissist who has the most money will be the one covering the expenses in exchange for sex. They might cover their rent or bills. They might take them out to dinner. They might even buy them a car. Whatever they need, they will try to provide it to them in exchange for sex. They act as a provider, someone who can provide for the other narcissist. And of course, as the other narcissist is in need, they will give them whatever they need in exchange for whatever is being provided. From the outside, it seems like they're getting everything they ever wanted. It looks like they have found someone to look after them. But what you don't see is that they're only being used for sex. Or whatever else they have the pride to them. They think that they've got it easy. They're getting whatever they ever wanted. And they found someone who's easy to take advantage of. But what they don't realize is that they're also dealing with a narcissist. The narcissist who is needy may feel as though they found a greater opportunity than what they had with their last supply. But what they don't realize is that they're being used too. And this is where they get into serious trouble. This is where they will make some really big mistakes. Because they're both living in a delusional fantasy. And they're not being realistic. It blinds them to what is actually happening. It deprives them of understanding, judgment and perception. Once the money has ran out, or they've got married or had children, that is when reality begins to sink in. That is when they begin to realize that they were both using each other.
And now there's no money. Now the other narcissist begins to lose interest. So they no longer want sex. And from that point on, it's all downhill. That is when they will begin to seek other sources. They might even hoover old sources of supply. They have to accept that they were taken advantage of. And they will be quick to blame the people around them. When really, it's their own fault for being so greedy. It's their own fault for being so preoccupied with their own selfish desires. They were trying to trick people instead of being real or honest. If you ever see them after they've been discarded by another narcissist, you will see that they look completely defeated. They look miserable. And you may even feel sorry for them. But it really was inevitable. It was unavoidable. They had to create their own downfall because they were being dishonest from the start. They were both selfish. They both had hidden agendas. So at the end, they're both miserable. They were both looking out for themselves instead of building each other up. So it ends with them both bringing each other down. Thank you for watching. I hope this video resonated with you. Please like, comment, share and subscribe. Click the bell icon to receive notifications for my future videos. If you would like to donate, my PayPal link is in the video description. Coaching inquiries, you can email me at narcissfavorcoaching at gmail.com. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you soon.